Let's talk about Donald Trump's white mediocrity. So I've slowly but surely come to terms with the fact that Donald Trump is our president. And that really deep sorrow that I felt on November 8th has slowly transformed into anger. Rage, really. And I'm outraged by a whole lot of stuff. But right now, I'd like to focus on how insulting it is as a black woman to be assaulted by white mediocrity in such a grand way. I consider myself to be an ambitious person and I was certainly raised by ambitious people. And ever since I was a kid, my parents told me that I would have to work twice as hard as white folks to get what they had. And that even if I did extraordinary work, even if I was exceptional, people would still question it. It's basically the Papa Pope speech from Scandal. You have to be what? Twice. What? Twice as good. Twice as good as them to get half of what they have. And yeah, that is some really heavy stuff to lay on an elementary school age child. But that's what it means to be black in America. And as much as somebody like President Obama wants to say that race relations are so much better than they were 20 or 30 years ago, those statements are just as true now as they were when I was a kid or when my parents first heard them. And the need for those sorts of discussions might not go away anytime soon. Studies show that millennials are not that much less racist than their parents. But back to Trump. Donald J. Trump is mediocre in every way except for his net worth, which he is surely overstating. He's wildly exaggerated his business acumen as well. This is a lucky man born with a silver spoon who has used every shortcut and trick to get ahead. And because we are taught to idolize the rich, this man has been given the reins to drive the country into the ground. Donald J. Trump is categorically unfit to lead this nation. Not only is he unknowledgeable, but he is notoriously uncurious. Now, compare that to President Obama, who, for all of his faults, was deeply invested in knowledge and figuring things out. That's a stark contrast to Donald Trump, who couldn't even be bothered to show up to intelligence briefings. I'm a person that very strongly believes in academics. Except not really. Donald Trump speaks and writes with the fluency of a fifth grader. The last man who held that office was editor of the Harvard Law Review, a constitutional law scholar. I'm mad about that. Every time I see Donald Trump spitting out his barely literate utterances, I'm reminded of how much work I had to put into presenting myself effectively. Work that my parents did and their parents. We didn't have a choice. Not only that, but Trump has surrounded himself with mediocre white people. He's got a White House full of them. It's funny that Omarosa is in there because I loved when she said this. It's different for, for you and I. I'm an African-American woman. You get to walk around and be mediocre and you still get rewarded with things. We have to be... We have to be exceptional to get anything in this business. Tracy Jan of the Washington Post did an incredible write-up on this. We're literally regressing. Trump's cabinet is more white and more male than any cabinet since the 80s. The people he's chosen to lead government agencies have fewer advanced degrees than any first-time cabinet in 24 years. And what's so funny is that for all conservative talk about affirmative action and how we've lowered the bar to diversify our institutions, Donald Trump has lowered the bar to fill his cabinet with white men. And let's talk about another point of hypocrisy. Donald Trump not only championed birtherism, but he led a racist witch hunt for Barack Obama's college transcripts. He questioned how Barack Obama got into Columbia University and Harvard Law School. Meanwhile, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, was a rather unremarkable student, according to administrators at his private school, and still managed to make it into Harvard. How did that happen? He bought his way in. This is all detailed in a book by Daniel Golden. Kushner's parents pledged $2.5 million the year he was accepted. In the book, one of the administrators from his school said this, we thought for sure there was no way this was going to happen. Then lo and behold, Jared was accepted. It was a little bit disappointing because there were at the time other kids we thought should really get in on the merits and they did not. Now he serves as an advisor to the president. We know money and connections aid people in getting into elite institutions, but it's much more fun to scale scapegoat black folks for affirmative action. And we have to talk about Betsy DeVos. She will soon be Secretary of Education, despite having spent no time in a classroom and possessing an agenda to dismantle public education. I had low expectations, but I did not expect Betsy DeVos to show up to her Senate confirmation hearing completely unprepared. Here she is getting caught up by a question from Senator Al Franken. And I would like your, your views on uh, the relative advantage of 
profit, measuring, uh, doing assessments and using them to measure proficiency or to measure, measure growth. Well, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I think if, if I'm understanding your question correctly around proficiency, I would, I would also um, correlate it to competency and mastery so that you, each student is measured according to the um, advancement that they're making in each subject area. Well, that's growth. A, at, at, that's not proficiency. So in other words, the growth they're making is in growth. The proficiency is if an arbitrary reached, standard. If they've reached a level, the proficiency is if they've reached a, a like third grade level for reading, et cetera. Is no, I'm talking about the debate between proficiency and growth. Yes. And what, what your thoughts are on them. Well, I was just asking to clarify. She didn't even try to study. This woman didn't even feel it necessary to fake competency. But apparently being an heiress is all you need to lead a government agency these days. As a citizen, I'm disgusted. As a black woman, I could not be angrier because folks who look like me know what it's like to be passed over even when you have the credentials. Really, Donald Trump's picks couldn't be more American. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, white folks who have just a high school diploma earn more than black folks who've attended some college. Harvard professor Diva Pager found that white men with a criminal conviction are actually more likely to be hired than black men without one. Thankfully, I'm not cynical enough to stop trying or to discourage other black folks from working their hardest. But that is why I do not respect this president. I'm dotting my I's and crossing my T's while you get there doing that? <sighs> no. Nope. Illegitimate. Donald Trump is and will always be just another mediocre white man to me. President mediocre white man. Sorry. Hey guys, it's Kim. Be sure to like and share this video. Visit the links and books I mentioned and if you learned something, leave a tip.